With both sides in seemingly intractable positions, a bipartisan House Problem Solvers Caucus published its own framework, suggesting an immediate suspension of the debt limit through this year and a raise of the debt limit into 2025 if deficit and budget controls are adopted and an external commission is appointed to make fiscal recommendations. With proponents saying this proposal does what both sides want by decoupling the debt ceiling and the budget process. Backers are drawing up legislative text as a last resort in case the U.S. gets close to default. So when might that be? Well, Treasury typically communicates a week or two after tax day to adjust the so-called X date if it's needed. But right now, Andrew, that's set for June 5th. Okay. Kayla, thank you for that report. We're going to keep our eyes on all of this. Can't look away, unfortunately. Wish we could. Thanks. You can. We can. They'll, t they'll handle it. Then it'll come back. Uh, right now, we want to welcome Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick, Republican of Pennsylvania, and Congressman Josh Gottheimer, a Democrat of New Jersey. They co-chair the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus. And, and gentlemen, thank you both for being here today. Um, Thanks for having us. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Congressman Fitzpatrick, let's start with you, because we just heard the plan of uh, Kevin McCarthy. Is this a plan that you support? And is there, are there enough people in your caucus to actually take that plan and get approval in the House at this point? Yeah, thanks for having us. I think they eventually get there. Uh, might require some very minor tweaks, but um, the, the Speaker McCarthy deserves a ton of credit, um, as does uh, Garrett Graves, uh, Representative Graves, who uh, was sort of uh, pulling everyone together to, to hear everyone out. Um, you know, it, it's I, I, nobody's read it yet, by the way. At least I have, and it's over 300 pages, so that's step one. Um, but I think they're moving in the right direction, and I think uh, eventually they're going to get the votes to get there. So why, why are you putting forth this proposal today if you think that proposal is going to get passed? That's a great question. So basically what we do, what our caucus does, is we offer two-party solutions, uh, but we, op we operate in the, in the backdrop, in the background, just like we did with infrastructure. Uh, we always uh, let leadership uh, do their negotiations. We support those negotiations. We hope those negotiations are successful, just like was the case in, uh, in the case of infrastructure. Uh, but in the case of infrastructure, those uh, negotiations broke down. We had a solution at the ready. We had a methodical way to go through it. Phase one was defining infrastructure. Phase two was scoping it out, putting a price tag on it. Phase three uh, were the paid fors. And ultimately, it was our solution that ended up becoming law and getting signed into law by the president. So uh, we always do the same thing for all these big issues. We uh, do our work in the background. Um, ultimately, we're going to need a two-party solution to this anyway. We need to get 60 votes in the Senate. And we're hoping that our proposal, our work that we're doing in the background, will be helpful to leadership. Congressman Gottheimer, a lot of the proposals that you all are putting forth sound pretty reasonable, sound like they are things that both sides <clears throat> might be able to agree to. But w when you put out the idea of an external commission that's uh, you know, delegated with coming up with some sort of solutions for these things, I think people probably get PTSD and think about what happened to Simpson Bowles when they put in so much work on that commission, tried to come up with great ideas, and then, in the end, it got scuttled. Listen, we're in a very different place than we were years ago. You know, we're, we're literally staring at a fiscal cliff. Um, we, we, we know our country with interest rates where they are, with the economy where it is. We, we need to do everything we can to address our long-term fiscal health. But the idea, and I think we all agree on this, that we would literally put the full faith and credit of the United States at risk <clears throat> right now, put people's 401ks at risk and our savings, our standing in the world vis-a-vis -vis China, and, uh, and others uh, over the debt ceiling makes absolutely no sense. We've got to put that aside, but we also have to deal with our, our longer-term fiscal health issues. And, and we can do both. I mean, that's kind of the point. But it's going to take outside experts and ideas, you know, some people who are willing to actually make, uh, make some tough recommendations across <clears throat> the board. And I think we should consider those in an up-and-down up or down vote, which is exactly what we've proposed. But the bottom line is right now what's critical is that and, and as Brian said, we need to really look to our leaderships first and say, hey, hopefully you sit down and work this out. What we've offered is a backup plan uh, in case things don't work out. But what we all agree on is we cannot uh, afford to default on the full faith of credit of the United States and, and our, put our reputation in the world and people's savings at risk. That is unacceptable.